The Ukrainian military is starting to demand the return of the former commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian armed forces, Zaluzny, who was sent into exile to Great Britain. This was reported by the Ukrainian TG channel Legitimate with reference to its own sources. It is noted that against the backdrop of failures in Donbass and the Kursk adventure, which is devouring the resources of the Ukrainian armed forces, Zaluzny's authority is growing by leaps and bounds, while the ratings of Zelensky and Sirsky are going down. As the source reported, the military directly blames Zelensky with his PR campaigns and his protege Alexander Sirsky, who is following the lead of the political authorities for all the failures. More and more military personnel are demanding that Zaluzny's team be returned to control of the army and that the office-based approach to the army's affairs be stopped, writes the channel. However, experts believe that Zelensky will under no circumstances return Zaluzny. Now the military is demanding that Zaluzny be returned to the post of commander-in-chief and then they can put him in the presidential chair. According to Valery Zaluzny, the world has finally begun to realize the importance of the war in Ukraine and it is not exclusively an internal problem of the country. His speech at the British think tank Chatham House elicited a significant response worldwide. Zaluzny noted that this means that the world is beginning to think about the war and hopes that it will lead to a ceasefire. He was also thankful for the support on the internet and for providing opinions regarding his speech. The general noted that he is satisfied with the reaction of the enemies as this indicates that they fear Ukraine. He also emphasized that the war against Russia requires a mathematical approach and a victory plan. Zaluzny added that he does not support the mobilization of young people aged 18 to 25, but views positively their role in saving the state if there is a threat to its existence. He is convinced that young people at this age can save the country through their different approaches and thinking. During a stop at Havana Express Cuban Kitchen and Bakery ahead of his event in Las Vegas, former President Donald Trump was greeted with many supporters chanting his name and other phrases, including, We Love Trump, and Latinos for Trump. Asked by a reporter about Kelly's assertions that he had said he wanted generals like Hitler's, Trump said, No, I never said that. In addition to enthusiastic supporters, the restaurant also had a life-sized cutout of Trump wearing a sombrero. Trump walked through the restaurant with Rubio and Vivek Ramaswamy, greeting people at tables and posing for pictures. Thank you, President Trump, a man shouted. At the White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. believes that at least 3,000 North Korean soldiers traveled by ship to Vladivostok, Russia's largest Pacific port, in early to mid-October. These soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training, Kirby said. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will enter into combat alongside the Russian military, but this is certainly a highly concerning probability. Kirby said they could go to Western Russian and then engage in combat against Ukraine's forces. If North Korean soldiers do enter into combat, this development would demonstrate Russia's growing desperation in its war against Ukraine, Kirby said. 
And we know Mr. Putin is has been able to purchase North Korean artillery. He's been able to get North Korean ballistic missiles, which he has used, against Ukraine. Kirby warned, however, that, I can tell you one thing, though, if they do deploy to fight against Ukraine, they're fair game. He said a key question is what North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un is getting out of this. South Korean officials worry that Russia may reward North Korea by giving it sophisticated weapons technologies that could boost its nuclear and missile programs that target South Korea. South Korea said Tuesday it would consider supplying weapons to Ukraine in response to the reported troop dispatch. South Korea's spy chief had told lawmakers that 3,000 North Korean troops are now in Russia receiving training on drones and other equipment before being deployed to battlefields in Ukraine. Last week, South Korea's spy agency said North Korea had sent more than 13,000 containers of artillery, missiles and other conventional arms to Russia since August 2023 to replenish its dwindling weapons stockpiles. Reports that the North is sending troops to Russia stoked security jitters in South Korea. It has shipped humanitarian and financial support to Ukraine, but it has so far avoided directly supplying arms in line with its policy of not supplying weapons to countries actively engaged in conflicts. North Korea has 1.2 million troops, one of the largest standing armies in the world, but it hasn't fought in large-scale conflicts since the 1950-53 Korean War. Experts question how much North Korean troops would help Russia, citing a shortage of battle experiences. Experts say North Korea wants Russia's economic support and its help to modernize the North's outdated conventional weapon systems as well as its high-tech weapons technology transfers.